coming to you live on tape from the beautiful Campbell Bell Building on the Square in Fayetteville, Arkansas. It's time for Northwest Arkansas Business Radio. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You have landed on another episode of Northwest Arkansas Business Radio right here on Northwest Arkansas Business Radio X. I am so excited to have a couple of uh, guests of distinction with me this morning as uh, as we open the doors to the Campbell Bell Building and start letting our Northwest Arkansas radio guests come through the door. Um, we've got a great show for you this morning, and I'm super pumped to talk about a cause and an organization and truly a couple of people that uh, are, are really going to have you thinking by the end of this episode. I think uh, I think what they do and what they represent is that important. And so I look forward to you holding on to this and then giving us whatever comments that you want to in the in the uh, comment section of YouTube, or if you want to go ahead and, and uh, comment there right on iTunes, Spotify, rank that a, a four or five star. We hope five star. Um, we want you to enjoy your podcast experience, and we're going to uh, bring you an experience this morning that you can be proud of. I've got two young ladies here this morning from the Kendrick Fincher Hydration for Life uh, organization. They're here this morning to talk to us a little bit about what they do, who they are, what they represent. So Keisha, Kayla, welcome so much to Northwest Arkansas Business Radio. We're excited to have you guys here this morning. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us on. Yeah, no problem. No problem at all. So tell us, for for those few people in the audience, and, and I was one of those just a month or two ago, that doesn't know what Kendrick Fincher is all about, go ahead and share with us what is the, the Kendrick Fincher uh, Hydration for Life, all the words. Tell us what it is and what it means and why you guys have committed your professional life to it. Yeah, so Kendrick Fincher Hydration for Life has been around since 1996. Okay. We were founded when Kendrick, who was a local athlete, he was 13 years old and played at Elmwood and Rogers. On his first day of football practice for the school year, he had a heat stroke. My goodness. And after 18 days of being in ICU, he ended up passing away from complications of his heat stroke due to organ failure. My goodness. Okay. Um Wow. So that, that's a pretty heavy way to start the, the presentation, but obviously uh, an incredible catalyst for someone getting ready to get something done or do something on behalf of people. Now, I remember when I was in high school, I played football and, and, and it was the only sport I thought I was any good at because of my size. Right. But I can remember coaches saying, hey, you, you know, you haven't earned water yet. You haven't you haven't got to the point where you get to take a break yet. Show us effort and we'll you know. So I would imagine it would be kind of. Uh, a difficult march to get people on board uh, to say, hey, give the baby some water. That sounds silly for me to say, but how tough is that of a campaign to get people behind? Yeah, so uh, Kendrick's mom, Rhonda, started our organization for that sole purpose is okay. to make sure that athletes and students and pretty much anybody in our community has access to water when they need it most, whether that's at football practice, uh, before school, in the middle of class, you mm -hmm. know, the teacher might be reading a book and a kid gets thirsty. They need access to water. Yeah. Um, so that's why our, our organization exists. Yeah. And we do so many different things throughout the, throughout the school year, throughout the summer. Um, we educate students, athletes, and the community on what proper hydration truly is. So not just drink half your body weight in ounces. But what does that look like during your business day, when you're outside mowing the yard, when you're doing work? Um, and then we go to work site visits, we do senior citizen expos, and we talk about hydration um, and what that looks like to each individual. Mm -hmm. And then we also donate cold tubs, water bottles to students and athletes to yeah. make sure that they have those life-saving equipment yeah. when they need it most. Yeah. Okay. So... Can I just be real with you for a second yeah. here? Because, I mean, you both look like you weigh about a buck ten. And so that's like, you know, 55 ounces, 60 ounces of water a day, whatever. We're talking about a, a ton of water for a guy my size. Like, is it really feasible that somebody's going to be able to drink half their body weight in ounces of water a day? I think I would float away. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. What do y'all think? Uh, it's definitely feasible, um, okay. and we can look at this a couple different ways. One, when you wake up in the morning, you should be drinking a glass of water before you brush your teeth. Like wow. you should just be that first eight ounces should be out of the way, okay, right away. 
But then I'm going to break this down because most everybody watching is going to be adults. Yeah. How many beers can a guy sit down and drink in one night? Okay, so and how that... many ounces? <laughs> so if you can sit down and drink a six pack of beer, yeah, you can drink. So your I, correct. I've got to tell you, I also take issue with this crew, right? Because like. I, I'm not a beer drinker, but I'm a Diet Coke drinker, right? I love some Diet Coke. Usually, uh, usually I have one or two a day, but on a, on a day where I'm just letting it all hang out, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I might hit six Diet Cokes a day. And is that there are some cans? men that will drink a thirty pack of beer at night? And I'm like, how do you drink thirty beers? I don't understand it. If that's you, send in some video mail. Maybe we'll feature you on the podcast, and you can tell your superpower story. I don't know. It just seems like an incredibly large amount of liquid. That's all. Even yeah. for beer. I, I mean, don't... yeah, even. So your six your six Diet Cokes, are those cans or bottles? Because that matters. But it's usually a combination, a romantic combination of the both. Okay, so say you did a 20, you did a 20 ounce Diet Coke. Yeah, That's a standard easy, bottle easy, of Coke. Yeah. And you had three of those. That's 60 ounces right there in three Diet Cokes. And that's if you drank nothing else. No water, no apple juice. Okay. So we may have to do a separate session where I like reveal my weight on on air, which <laughs> almost no one would ever do, right? And we we calculate a game plan mm-hmm. for how I'm going to drink a hundred none of your business ounces of water a day, okay? <laughs> um, anyway, that that's fun and all, but let's go ahead and get back to the real reason why we're here this morning, and that's the fact that that very tragic that a young man lost his life and his mama sprung into action. Why don't you go ahead and tell us the the origin story behind Kendrick Fincher and Hydration for Life. Yeah, so I have been lucky enough, and many people who have been part of our organization in the past have met Rhonda, who is Kendrick's mom. And she's an amazing human being because she took this tragedy and made it into something beautiful for other yeah, people. I can't even imagine. I can't I mean, either. the strength that that must have taken. Wow. So after he passed away, um, the community came together and raised money. And that money... Rhonda wanted to do something to help the community, something to give back and memorialize Kendrick. Mm -hmm. So she looked into a few options, you know, putting his name on a baseball field, different things. um, And she ultimately decided to start our organization. Wow. Wow. So um, I don't even know what it takes to to put together an organization like that, but I would imagine it took an army of volunteers and and just hours of people giving their time to make something like this happen. Um, Can you describe a little bit about what the the reach of the organization has been since it's gotten started in over the last, what, 27 years? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I it definitely took an army and Rhonda had so many people to back her in the community as she got started with our organization. Um, but over the years, we we work with tens of thousands of students every year, whether that's going to schools and educating them and donating water bottles. We mm. go to athletic programs, parks and rec programs, uh, school sports teams. We also go to senior citizen homes. And then throughout the summer, we go to summer camps, Camp War Eagle, daycares that have summer programs. And we educate students, athletes, and anybody there. And wow. then we also go to community community events throughout the year. Um, but tens of thousands of students, athletes, every year we are educating in person. Wow. So that's we, incredible. We have a huge outreach. Yeah. Now, um, now, Keisha, I actually knew you from other business ventures, right? So, yeah. like, we we did the whole networking thing. We ran in circles, and I remember the day you stood up and said, "Hey, I'm still doing all that, but I've got a cause that I really care about now." And you began talking about Kendrick Fisher. Um, what was it about this organization that caught your eye and attention and made you want to begin to steer your efforts that way? So it's personal for me because I grew up in Las Vegas. I'm from the desert. So hot there. It's so hot. (laughs) So hot. (laughs) So throughout my childhood, I just remember my dad always forcing me to stand there in the kitchen and drink a whole glass of water. Really? And I wasn't allowed to go outside and play until I did. Wow. And so when I met Kayla, I offered her some balloon services (laughs) to help with her gala. And I just, it, the message resonated with me. Um, because I don't think enough people pay attention to water. And you may have a headache or you may feel um, unhappy or crankier, anxious or something, and it's 
it could just be as simple as being dehydrated. Mm -hmm. So if we can educate enough people just to remind them, hey, drink a little bit more water, trade one of those Diet Cokes for a water, alternate Coke or beer to water. You know what I'm saying? So um, if we can just help people drink a little bit more water, we could save some lives. Sure. And maybe you'll have a better day because you're not having that unnecessary headache. Or, maybe so. Yeah. Maybe so. I mean, for this recording, I put out some really cool Business Radio X beer steins, but I think we should have had your water bottles up here because <laughs> that was one of the things, and I, I don't know if this happens, it must happen more than you guys know or just as much as you know, but as soon as we started talking about water pre-broadcast this morning, I immediately looked to see what you guys were packing as far as like water bottles, and I'm like, Okay, okay, we got we got some... They're representing folks. We'll just put it that way. Um, so uh, I love that you go about your business like giving away water bottles and bringing, uh, doing intentional things to bring attention to an issue that a lot of us don't really think about, especially if we don't have kids in athletics that, that are personally affected by this. Um, but I got on your website before the broadcast. You guys have an incredible website. It talks about all about what you do and why you do it. And I looked at some education and supporting activities activities and I'd just love to have you guys explain a little bit about what you do in these areas and um, and if we're still in the planning phase to make these areas happen that's cool too because I think our audience loves a good uh, dreamer story and hey let's go make something happen together I know that we all want to partner behind you with this and make this happen too so be smart be I said that la- longer because there's two e's so either somebody didn't spell the word be correctly or there's a reason for b e e hydrate so what is Be Smart, Be Hydrated? So our Be Smart, Be Hydrated program is our youth presentation. So okay. we do that one mainly with elementary schools, kids under the middle school age that aren't quite in athletics yet. Yeah. But they need to stay hydrated. They're at school. They have recess. They're out with their friends a lot. Yeah. Um, and that Be Hydrated, the B that goes along B, with it. Yeah. Yeah. It actually was designed by a student. Okay. So we do a t-shirt design contest every spring for our youth run. How cool. And one of the Bs from our shirts is actually the one we use for that presentation. That right? It's on all the pamphlets, the bookmarks, the stickers, so everything that, that goes along with did them. that uh, B become a bit of a mascot of sorts? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I kept trying to think of the word mascot, but all I was thinking of was B. And I was yeah. like, no, there's the another heat. word there. Yes. How about, okay, it says beat the heat, right? So this is an educational activity. I uh, got a little far from my mic there. Sorry about that. This is an educational activity designed to what? Yeah, the Beat the Heat program focuses on that middle school, junior high, high school athletic side. Okay. So that's the program that we use when we go speak with soccer players, football players, anybody in that athlete world, coaches, things like that. Okay. And so that's our our presentation that focuses on proper hydration, what that really means when you're out there working on and off the field. So prehydrate hydrate rehydrate Mm -hmm. not just in the moment but before and after practice yeah and then we also talk about heat stroke awareness proper protocols if a heat stroke were to happen and we donate cold tubs to athletic programs teams I love it. it. I had no idea there was so much to this organization. I'm all, and we're not even halfway through the list here. Um, Keisha, uh, the, one of the next items is community involvement, and I know that's a piece of of your mission uh, or or real. Um, I don't know, drive to make a difference in this organization. So what are some things that are going on in the community regarding Kendrick Fisher right now? Yeah, so we set up hydration stations and cooling huts at community events. So Kayla and Laurel were just at the community showcase in Rogers and they set up a tent. And it's always surprising to us how many people actually come into the tent and drink water Yeah, um, because most people don't carry water with them when they go out in public. So um, just being in those types of events is really important Mm -hmm. um we also do the 5k every year um and the youth run and we have a uh, beat the heat golf tournament Mm -hmm. and right now we're working on our back to school blaster bash which is happening at the end of this month okay that sounds fun please explain what that is (laughs) blaster bash it's gonna be so fun i can't wait Um, i hope i get an invitation please explain what that is So um, we're having a community, like a family event on Friday, September 29th from 5 to 10 p.m. And it's a essentially it's a nerf uh, battle. Yeah. So we're going to have two teams and 
you bring your own blaster. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Go out there, have a good time. We're doing uh, rounds separated by age, so you know the bigger kids aren't going to trample the smaller. Yeah, kids. well, perfect, right? And we're going to do some, you know, education to educate the community about proper hydration. We'll have some of our cooling tubs out there, so you can see exactly what it is that we're donating to the sports teams. Um, and we're going to have local businesses, vendors, a bounce house, um, face painting, balloon animals, a DJ. And then at the end, there's so much going on. At the end, we're um, having NWA Space okay. come out and they're going to set up their telescopes and we're going to do a um, star watching. No way. Party. How cool. Yes. And so... The entire event is free, but to support our mission, we are charging per um, the blaster battle rounds. Yeah. So you can come out and enjoy everything, yeah. but it's um, from seven to ten dollars. But if you want to hit round. somebody in the face yeah. with a Nerf exactly. spear, you're gonna have to pony up, right? Yeah. My 14 year old would ask for money for that. Like I noticed, he didn't. I didn't say he would pay for it because he has no money. It's all mine. But he would be like, "Hey, uh, bonus dad, you think I could shoot you in the face for 15 bucks or something like that, right? <laughs> how how much does it cost to participate in the like? Uh, I I just I feel certain death coming for me. How much does it cost to participate in this? Uh, seven to ten dollars. So okay. the regular rounds are seven dollars. You do have to bring your own blaster um, and eye protection. So okay, that might help me have. actually, because I don't know that we have a blaster. We've got some a water nerf, guns. A nerf gun. Nerf well, gun. Okay. Yeah, a nerf gun. Yeah, we have some of those. Yeah. So if you have some nerf guns, bring your nerf guns. Bring some sunglasses or protective eyewear, um, and then seven dollars gets you into the round. Play <sighs> multiple rounds if you like. We're doing a glow, some glow rounds at the end. Uh, when it starts to get dark, and we have a really great company helping us out yeah. called Master Blaster, and no they way. just put on these parties. So they wow. have, they are so amazing. They've decided to come and help us since we're not professional yeah. Nerf people. Yeah, um, but we do have kids, so we kind of know what yeah. to expect. But they're gonna fine tune it, so they're gonna be out there helping set up, and we have obstacles, and um, we're looking at a game that will. You know, just help us educate the community and have fun and support our mission because um, cooling tubs are not free. No. Um, but we want to give them to the sports teams because we know that they need it and those will save lives. So these types of events help us to purchase those things like mm. the water bottles that we give to the second graders and the cooling tubs. Yeah. Wow. So is this just a, a general fundraiser for the entire group? Okay, love it. Wow. Um, and where's it at? I know you said September 29th. It's but at Osage Park in Bentonville. Okay, okay. So there you go. If, if you're looking for a way to get involved and to show this organization some love and support, boy, September 29th. What were the hours again? From 5 to 10. 5 to 10. So with NWA Space, I'm intrigued by this because I, I think we have some of the prettiest skies over the entire world right here in northwest Arkansas. I actually think the prettiest is in my backyard, but I'm just prejudiced that way, right? So um, NWA Space, are they, they're coming out to set up telescopes. Can Are we going to get to look through them or do they have them put up on monitors? Like No, they're, they're going to have a booth during the day so mm -hmm. you can go and interact with them and get their education um, and then after dark they're going there we have an area set up for them and then we're all going to move over to that field they're going to turn off the pickleball court lights and they're going to have their telescopes set up and we get to look at those and they're going to educate us about the stars wow so you didn't say anything about pickleball keisha oh. what's well, up with that <laughs> What's up with that? All right. Anyway. Hey, great job. Great job. That sounds like a wonderful, wonderful event. Um, Kayla, tell us about this annual youth run, because I've heard it come up a couple of times. It seems like it's a great big deal in the DNA of what you guys do. So talk to us about it. And um, uh, what should we know? Yeah. So in early on in our and the organization, it was a little bit harder for us to get into schools and to educate the students mm -hmm. and athletes. Sure. And so in the in the transition of trying to do that, we started the annual youth run. So this year, in 2023, we had our 25th annual. So it's been going on for a long time. 25 years. Mm -hmm. 25 years. Uh, so that's our the, the first way that we really interacted wholeheartedly with the community and the students and how we got our mission out to them. Mm -hmm. And so over the last 25 years, we added a 5K. This past year, 
two years, we did a 13K as well to honor Kendrick's 13 years of life. Wow. Um, and so we've added cycling. We've done some different things. But that youth run has always stayed a major part of what we do every year. Mm -hmm. And it's it's interesting because the students really look forward to it. And like I said, we have a t-shirt design contest. So we contact the local art teachers. We send it out on social media. Anybody, any student, eighth grade or younger, can participate come up with the design and then uh, the winner mm -hmm. is on all the t-shirts. Wow. So it's a really cool thing and they went a hundred dollars. So uh, it's really cool for them to see how their art can mm -hmm. be put into use. Yeah. Um, but we have over 500 students and, and parents that are out at our 5k and youth run every year. It's amazing. Yeah. What a great turnout. Yeah. Holy smokes. Um, and, and what time of the year is that typically, is that event? Mother's Day weekend. Okay. So we already have it next year. It'll be May 11th. Okay. So it's Saturday of Mother's Day weekend. Um, and it's a great family event. It's very similar to the Nerf. We have community involvement. We have face painting, balloon animals, everything that there is included in your registration when you mm -hmm. sign up. Um, so even if you just want to come out, let the kids run around a little bit and get their face painted, it's a great event. Sounds great. Now, um, one of the things toward the end of this list of educational and supporting activities is just partnerships. Now, um, my guess is that uh, you guys benefit tremendously from partnerships from other organizations, um, whether they be for-profit or non-profit coming together. So what kind of, because we have an audience that loves to help. They, they, they love to listen to great causes and then show up and, and, and help. So what type of partnerships would be the best for the Kendrick Fincher Foundation? Um, what, uh, what, what type of help or collaboration are you looking for? Do you want to take this one? You want me to do it? Well, I will say we are looking for volunteers okay. because our team is very small. Mm -hmm. It's the two of us and then Laurel, our education director. Um, so when we are doing cool huts or these events, um, one of, in my opinion, <laughs> one of the things that we do need at the moment are volunteers to come out for just a couple of hours um, to maybe man a tent or do registration and work alongside with us. Okay. Okay. So yeah. anybody with some extra hours to volunteer? Yeah, definitely volunteers is a huge need for any nonprofit such as ourselves, yeah. especially the smaller nonprofits like us. Another big uh, partnership that we always look for are sponsors or donors that want to help provide uh, equipment to students. Mm -hmm. So cold tubs on average are about $250, mm. but that's the life-saving equipment that's going to help anybody who has a heat stroke. Right. Really so, small amount of pay or mm -hmm. a small amount of money when you think about mm -hmm the dividends that come from it. Exactly. So in Kendrick's case, when somebody has a heat stroke, it's 100% pre preventable, not preventable, sorry. When someone has a heat stroke, it's 100%. Why can I not talk? Okay, <laughs> we'll try again. Don't worry I don't. About when somebody has a heat stroke, it's 100% survivable mm. if the proper protocol is taken. Okay. So when somebody has that heat stroke, cooling their body as fast as possible is how they survive. Mm. And so these cold tubs are $250 on average, but that's not just good for one athlete. They right. will keep these for years. So this isn't just helping whatever team they have today. It's any athlete they have in the future. And in Arkansas, it's a state law that they have to have a cold tub every pub public school. But one thing we've realized is a lot of these schools only have one. Mm -hmm. So it might be in the football locker room, mm -hmm. but then when my daughter is playing softball on Thursday night, the football locker room is way across and the campus. Locked, right? And right? may be locked. Mm -hmm. Or our softball coach might not even know where it is. Right. And so our goal next year is to provide uh, these cold tubs to every athletic department. Wow. So that baseball has one, soccer yeah. has one, football has one. Um, so going above and beyond mm -hmm. because there's no price that covers losing a student or an athlete. Well, and when I sit here... Um, $250 doesn't seem like a great deal of money to me. However, I'm a former educator, former administrator. I, I know that not just the state of Arkansas, but every state is notorious for passing along new requirements, but not funding those requirements, right? And so uh, my guess is that these cold water tanks, along with a lot of what we're hearing with the new Arkansas Learns Act and everything else, you have all of these new mandates, but they're unfunded mandates. And so these these public partnerships, people who may not have the time, but they've got two hundred and fifty dollars 
10 times to give to different school districts or um, athletic teams and programs. They have the ability to do that, right? So if someone wanted to partnership with you guys or partner with you guys and say, hey, we don't have time to uh, you know, be here, here, or here, but I can write you a check, Like, how would they reach out to you so that they could partner with you financially or another way to kind of solidify their efforts with you? Yeah, so the best way to reach out to us, you can uh, find all of our information on kendrickfincher.org. Okay. My email's on there, our office phone number, address, um, and there's some different links on there that you can follow to send me an email directly. So the best way, um, or even on social media, Kendrick Fincher Hydration okay. for Life on Facebook and Instagram. Mm-hmm. So all of those go directly to one of us. Okay. Great. Um, So I'm kind of going to go a little bit out of order here, and I hope that's okay, because one of the things that Kendra said, or Keisha, I'm sorry, Keisha said that um, got my attention, and I already knew this, but for some reason within the context of the interview, it seems a little more important. Um, You both are mothers, right? You have kids. Um, How personal is this issue to you? Because You do have kids that are going to be under the control of another adult at a school or organization somewhere that may dictate when your baby can have water or not. Um, I guess the main question is, out of all of the things you could have supported, you've given your professional lives to do this. So what what is your why, Keisha? Um, It's very preventable. Mm. Like you said earlier, give the babies water. Yeah, that's all. A couple of weeks ago, a 12-year-old collapsed and passed away. Oh, my gosh. So this is PE, still happening. It's still happening. His PE teacher had him running laps, and he was like, I need water. But, you know, as parents and teachers, we have the kid who's like, oh, I'm I'm tired. I'm, I need a snack. Oh, yeah. I need to take it. Like, whatever. So you kind of, like, dismiss it. But with water, it's. It's a life or death situation. So we just want to educate as many people, including adults, um, as to the signs of dehydration and how important it is to get water to these kids and allow them to have water breaks and allow them to bring their water bottles into class or onto the field or onto the track or wherever it is so that we don't have to get a call we sent our healthy child to school yeah, and they're not coming home today. I couldn't even imagine your kid is healthy and safe. You think that they're safe and you get a call that says they passed away from dehydration, right? which is we have water. There's water. There's bottles of water all over this room. Yeah. There's no reason for a child not to come well, home. And what's funny, I can remember when I was a kid, I used to play the game Oregon Trail, right? You've died mm-hmm. of dehydration or you've died of dysentery. And I'm like, what is dysentery? I didn't even know how to read the word because it doesn't it doesn't really exist anymore. But yet dehydration still does. And I think I find it just fascinating that we're having this conversation in 2023 and that there are entire organizations focused around, Hey, give the babies water, right? Like, um, my son, he's, he, I love him. He's, he's my bonus son. He's the last of five, uh, between me and my wife. And, um, so he's in the eighth grade. He's the only one that lives at the house. He comes home almost every day complaining about how a teacher didn't let him leave class to go get a drink of water. Um, now, I also know that my son is capable of, I'm kind of bored. I don't want to listen to this teacher talk about career development or career orientation. I just want to take a walk. So not necessarily advocating for the teachers and educators that are listening to this, but being very aware of the other side of that debate, um, Ugh, that seems to be a tough place for a teacher to be in, right? Um, so is the answer just let let them bring water bottles into class? Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. What's the answer there? So one benefit from COVID is that all the water fountains got shut down. Mm-hmm. And so teachers were forced to let students have water bottles in class on their desk. Now I'm going to I'm going to give you the other side because okay. before I took over this organization, I was a teacher for 7 years, 
first and second grade. Holy smokes. Did you just drink out of the fountain of youth or what? Because I was surprised when you said you're a mama, but now you've been a teacher for seven years. Well, my oldest daughter is 15. So what? Yeah. Okay. We may have to edit that out, but I'm just <laughs> stunned here. Like when you both said you were mamas, I didn't know that. And I was like, you guys are a couple of kids, but no, you're not. You're like, Thanks. you're like, you got you grown ups. I'm sorry. I don't want to be disrespectful at, <laughs> no, at all. But you both look very young, and Thank so you. and that I feel not like not disrespectful. I feel at like all. I look very old. So you know, I'm just so yeah. Let's let's go into this a little bit then. So what were, you said you had the other side of the story. Yeah. Go ahead and share. So I was a teacher for seven years. I've had every student in the book. You know, that's I'm tired. I don't want to sit here anymore. My attention spans five minutes, and we've been sitting down for twenty. Mm-hmm. I need a drink. I need to go to the bathroom. I need a band aid. You know, all all. I've heard all the excuses. I've heard them all. Um, So the benefit of COVID is we started requiring that students have their water bottle in class because the water fountains were shut down. Mm -hmm. Um, But then with that, like you said, a lot of things aren't funded. So coming from that teacher aspect, there's all these requirements. But at the end of the day, somebody has to make sure, A, that they're happening and B, that we have the money to make them happen. And a lot of times that's where nonprofits come in is we see this need, whatever it might be, and we want to make sure that it's met. And that's where we come in. Our water bottles that we donate to students have all of our key facts on them. It's something that they can hold so they can remember the information. They can take it home and share it with their families. So it's not just like, oh, here's a bottle of whatever water or yeah. here's just like a dollar water bottle from Dollar Tree. It has the key information and You're facts that they need. You're literally giving the story for exactly. every bottle that you give away. I love that. Exactly. And so a lot of it, I think since COVID, a lot of schools do let kids still have their water bottle. Like I said, I have three kids, 15, 13, and seven. All of them are allowed to have a water bottle in class. But again, if you're sitting... You know, most of my lessons were on the carpet. So, mm-hmm. you know, hey, come sit on the carpet with me. Well, your water bottle's not on the carpet. So it's a, it's the same thing. But a lot of our, like Keisha said, like you said, it's educating the adults. So in the moment that they're in class and they're getting thirsty, if you are thirsty, you are already showing signs of dehydration. Mm. So we have three key facts, and they're very simple, is prehydrate. So at home, in the morning, when you wake up, drink mm-hmm. eight ounces of water. Mm-hmm. When it's the weekend, make sure your kid's drinking water and not just sitting on the couch drinking soda all day. So keep them prehydrated. Hydrate in the moment. So during class, make sure you're drinking water. During practice, all of that. And then rehydrate. So at the end of the day, after practice, after PE class, make sure that the kids have access to water and mm-hmm. they're staying hydrated. Mm-hmm. So it's not just this one moment that can solve a problem. It's we have to all be educated on mm-hmm. how hydration affects us from the time we wake up now until we go to bed and wake up again tomorrow. Sure. It's a whole process. Sure. But what about the what what about the kid who's uh drinking Gatorade all day long? I mean, isn't that the same as water? No, it's not. And Gatorade has its place. We love Gatorade. They're a sponsor. We love them. <laughs> We love you, Gatorade. I love it. We love you, Gatorade. We would <laughs> um, love to have you as a sponsor at Buzz Business Radio X, Gatorade. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. I, I didn't mean to like poach your deal there. No, you're go good. Go for it. Yeah. No, Gatorade is great for what it's meant for. Mm-hmm. We, apple juice, you need your vitamins from juice. You know, everything has its place. Sugary drinks are not great for hydration. Mm. So when you wake up, you shouldn't chug a sugary drink, whatever form it is. Mm-hmm. You need water. Um, When you're pre-hydrating for an event, you know you're going to be outside mowing the lawn. You're going to go run a 5K. When you're getting ready for that, you need to be hydrating Mm -hmm. with water. Water is the most effective hydration form. Mm -hmm. Then during an event, when you're sweating, when you're losing your electrolytes and your sodium, Gatorade is great for in-the-moment practices. That's why football teams have it out there. Mm -hmm. It's great for when you're losing everything that's happening in the moment. Mm -hmm. But then after your practice, after your game, that rehydration, again, water is your best friend for rehydration, not sugary drinks. So it's knowing a time and a place and everything in moderation. We're not like, you can never drink apple juice ever again because it's not good for hydration. That's not what we are. We're teaching the education behind the hydration, behind proper hydration. Um, and, And even like we say with beer or sodas, every time you have one, drink a glass of water afterwards. Mm -hmm. That's that education piece. I'm not going to stop eating birthday cake, but I don't eat three pieces of birthday cake every day. So it's that moderation. 
That would make for a good day, though. I'm just kidding. I mean, I'm just totally it was kidding. my birthday. My, wife's the, my might... wife loves cake. I'm not so much the cake guy, but that's all right. If it's my birthday, I might have three pieces of cake. There you but go. again, I'll have some vegetables in between. So yeah. it's that moderation and education. Yeah. There's, you know, we have education on on healthy eating, and we know that protein is good. Water is the same thing. It's just having that. The education of Love it. behind it. Love it. Well, I think you guys have brought a very thorough introduction to the Kendrick Fincher Foundation and, and Hydrate for Life. And um, Is there anything else that you want to communicate or anything you'd like to say before we close down for this session and, and uh, wish you guys the best and let our listeners get about the business of supporting you a little bit? Yeah. So hydration saves lives. So just yeah. make sure you're staying hydrated. <laughs> um, if you ever have a heat heat episode make sure you get cooled down that's the main thing that we teach this might happen to anybody to your student to your child to yourself if you feel the signs and symptoms cool down drink water and you'll be fine yeah just be educated absolutely Keisha anything to add or you feel like she buttoned it up pretty well there I think she did great and I just want to reiterate we're having our blaster bash at the end of the month and it's going to be a lot of fun come out it's gonna be a blast blast. september the 29th at osage park and the information's on our website okay so our website has everything that you need to know about us our mission how to get involved how to get in touch and all of our events registering for them where they're at Mm -hmm. all that good stuff yeah and you can also come to business radio x we'll make sure that we have all of that information put on the show notes so that people can find out exactly how to contact uh, or to get involved with your event how to contact you guys and so if you're listening to this podcast right now you're already one step ahead of finding out all the information you need to know about this event about this fantastic organization and how you can help as a northwest arkansas business radio listener so for Kayla, for Keisha, I'm so grateful that you guys came today. Thank you so much. Thank you for being so generous with your time. You know, my name is Adam Robison. This has been another episode of Northwest Arkansas Business Radio right here on Northwest Arkansas Business Radio X. We'll see you next time. <laughs>